Hello and welcome to today's stream. My name is Joseph Edward Massey. I'm a professional teacher on italki. So you can come and join me for private one-on-one -on -one English lessons. Today we are doing my relaxed conversation practice lesson where we're going to use music today. But you can come and join me where we'll use novels, games, TV, film and culture to learn English. I believe this is the best way to push yourself from an intermediate learner up to an advanced learner because we learn much better when we're relaxed and it's much easier to focus when we're interested in the materials. But if you do need exam preparation, you can come and join me with some boring Cambridge. Well, we'll try and make it interesting, but obviously the textbooks are nowhere near as interesting as real world materials, which I prefer to use. So today is use English, use music to learn English. It's a C1 advanced lesson because we are talking about roots maneuver. This is hip hop lesson one. We're doing the song Witness One Hope by Roots Maneuver. Now, this is the first hip hop song that I ever remember hearing, and it absolutely blew my mind. I'd never heard anything like it before. So I was a child when this song came out in England and it had these crazy sounds and like these abstract lyrics and like all of this slang and language that I didn't understand as an English person until like even looking into the lyrics today, some of the words are just, you know, they're like slang that I don't know. So let's get into it, shall we? We've done our Okay, I've renamed the uh, series. We're doing progressive rock via Pink Floyd is one series. Obviously, hip hop, and we're doing blues and rocks, blues and rock via Jimi Hendrix, and reggae via Bob Marley. Those are our previous lessons. So, well, 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 what vocabulary do we have today? <laughs> well, 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 it's an idiom used to express surprise or incredulity. I don't believe it. Well, 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 I don't believe it. If it's not you, you little rascal. So this is uh, very British, I think. Well, well, well. Uh, either sincerely, well, well, well. How nice it is to see you, or sarcastically. Well, well, well. Look who it is again. Uh, next one, task masker. Someone who gives others a lot of work to do and expects them to work hard. He might be referencing Taskmaster, which is an Avengers Marvel superhero. I'm not sure which one he's referencing in the song. Bionic, which is why, you know, Bionic, Taskmaster, Bionic. Or an American pronunciation, we can see they got the wide R sound here. So we say Bionic, we've got the schwa, o -o. Bionic, they say Bionic, Bionic. He's a bionic man. By ah, it's like an ah sound, whereas we use the ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Okay, using artificial materials and methods to produce activity or movement in a person or animal. A bionic arm, bionic leg, okay? So it's artificial materials, so robot and human together is bionic. Uh, also used to re refer to a person who's who has greater powers of strength, speed, etc., than seem to be possible for a human, a bionic man or woman. Next one, zit, a pimple, a spot. Maybe you have a red spot or zit on your head, or acne, there's lots of them, some acne, uncountable. A zit, two zits, lots of zits, acne, some acne, lots of acne, no, uh, uncountable, no S. Next one, break neck. Carelessly fast and dangerous. We normally have it as an adjective before the noun. Okay, so breakneck speed, breakneck pace. They were riding along at a breakneck speed. Or they were riding along at a breakneck pace. Next one, bitter. So bitter means the flavor. Maybe medicine is bitter. And it's also a type of beer. Bitter is an English style of pale ale that varies in color from gold to dark amber. A pint of bitter, this is a pint here. The size of the drink is a pint, a pint of bitter. Lean, okay, as an adjective slang, obviously lean, I lean on the wall. I lean on you to lean, but that's not what we're talking about. Well, it's related, I guess. Slang, informal, is a UK antonym for stoned or high on cannabis. <laughs> I am lean, man. 
not to be confused with USA lean, where it's a noun, also slang, for a purple cough syrup, syrup drink containing codeine. So we can assume that both both of these, you get high and you have to lean, you end up leaning over, you know, you're leaning. After smoking a few joints and hitting a couple of bongs, man, I am really lean. I'm high, right? I'm lean, okay? Demons, a negative feeling that causes you to worry or behave badly. She had her demons, and later in life, they drove her to drink. Cheese on toast. Cheese on toast is made by placing sliced or grated cheese. Okay, it's cheese on toast. Okay, I'm not reading all this. But it's very popular in the United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Caribbean, and African countries. I didn't know it was popular in Africa. But it's a very simple, very classic, like easy to make. Children make it all the time. Le uh, cheese on toast is, yeah, it's very easy and humble kind of food, basic kind of food. Very popular in the UK along with beans on toast, the other variant, which is exactly the same, but just for the can of beans on top of the toast instead, baked beans with the red tomato sauce, that is. So cheese on toast, beans on toast. Segway, it's spelled very irregularly, but it's from French, I guess. Segway, segway. To move easily and without interruption from one piece of music, part of a story, subject or situation to another. Okay, a segue to transfer from one topic to a different one with a link, right? Without interruption, they're kind of linked together, a segue. I was just talking about this, now uh, talking about something similar, but the next topic, right? They're linked together. Famine, a situation where there is not enough food for a great number of people, causing illness and death, or a particular period when this happens. There are a lot there were reports of refugees dying of famine. Thousands of people emigrated during the Irish potato famine of 1845 to 46. <laughs> English colonialism might be to blame. Sorry about that. My uh, ancestors, perhaps. Scumbag. <laughs> Talking of which, there's a segue. <laughs> there's a segue. So thousands of people emigrated during the Irish potato famine of 1845. Maybe that was the British uh, colonial or the English colonial settlers who uh, might have stolen those potatoes in the name of profit and keeping the uh, Irish down. To segue to our next point, they were scumbags. Scumbag, a very unpleasant person who has done something dishonest, dishonest or unacceptable. So, the uh, wage theft and removal of potatoes and general activities during the uh, British, uh, the English colonial period in uh, Ireland. And yeah, let's not get into it. I will move on. The scum of the earth. The scum of the earth is related to scumbag. Obviously, someone who is the scum of the earth is a scumbag. Okay. Idiom informal, the worst type of people that can be imagined. Politicians who use their power for their own gain are the scum of the earth. Silverback. Okay, in the song he says greyback, but silverback is the more usual definition. A silverback is an older male gorilla that has white or silver hair on its back and is the dominant member of its group. Slightly different pronunciation here. Silverback, sil silverback. I don't know, I don't know what this little hook here means, but we'll Investigate. The large 21-year-old silverback keeps a wary eye over his family group. Okay, silverback gorilla, we know. Jerk. And this is a new one. Jerk is a style of cooking native to Jamaica in which meat is dry rubbed or wet marinated with a hot spice mixture called Jamaican jerk spice. Okay, jerk spice. So there's some jerk chicken. It's kind of like a spicy, spicy barbecue roast chicken type thing. Okay, so let's find out about Roots Maneuver. Rodney Hilton Smith, better known by his stage name Roots Maneuver, is a British rapper or born 9th of September 1972. Is a British rapper and producer. Okay, the producer makes the music as well, the beats, the music. Since his debut in 1994, when I was three years old, 
he has produced numerous albums and singers on the label Big Dada, achieving commercial success with the albums Run Can Save Me and Slime and Reason. He has been described as one of the most influential artists in British history. Like I said, this was the first hip hop song I ever heard. And I believe this was the first hip hop, well, one of the first big hip hop songs and albums where it wasn't trying to copy the American pronunciation, American style of rapping. So you'd have these British artists who would talk with a British accent, but then the music would turn on and they'd start rapping with an American accent in an American way of speaking, because that's where hip hop came from. Obviously, originally it originated in New York in America. So Roots Maneuver sort of took the genre, but then used his English accent and his English uh, heritage and insight, to use the word here. Okay, Smith grew up around Stockwell, London, England. His parents were from a small village in Jamaica. So his first generation in the 1960s in England, there was a massive uh, influx of Jamaican immigrants, which was part of the British Empire again, which we won't get into. Um, who came over to England to help building things and lots of them were very highly skilled workers as well because for the growth that was happening in England we needed more workers to come in. His father was a preacher and a tailor as I was saying highly skilled people coming over. He spent much of his early life in poverty and this and his strict Pentecostal upbringing. So this is a type of Christianity, a type of uh, religion, Pentecostal upbringing, had an influence on his music, as can be heard in many of his tracks, such as Sinny Sin Sins and Colossal Insight. Are we, re are we live? Can you guys hear me? Is this real? Or is it a simulation? It appears to be real. Get in. Oh, okay, so that's part one of the bio on Roots Maneuver or Rodney Smith, as we could call him. Now, let's learn a bit about the song details. It's called Witness One Hope. Now, we've got this reference here, One Hope. If we zip all the way back through these to our classic friend, we got One Love by our friend Bob Marley. Now, Bob Marley, reggae, oh, again, we got the same root, Jamaica. Now, we're going to see this root throughout uh, these lessons on British music and British music history is a lot of, like I said, those Jamaicans that came over to work in the UK, they brought the music and the culture with them from the Caribbean. And that's like the the basis for obviously reggae, but then you, then you had ska and punk and like lots of pop music and hip hop is all based in reggae. So we've got One Love and this one is called One Hope, right? One Hope by Roots Maneuver. So Witness, or One Hope, also known as Witness the Fitness, because that's like the uh, the verse, the chorus, I mean, the hook. Witness, One Hope is a song by British rapper Roots Maneuver, released as the first single from his second studio album, Run, Come, Save Me, in 2001, when I was 10 years old. A hip-hop song with influences of dancehall, another genre coming in from the Jamaican reggae influences, and funk, which came from America more, I guess, the jazz to the... I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know much about funk. Uh, so, influences of dancehall and funk music in an electronically inspired bass line. Like I say, when I first heard this song, I'd never heard anything like it before. It was completely mind-blowing. And yeah, go check it out. It's on the playlist down below. I think it's, I mean, obviously now it's not 2001 anymore. So maybe it's not so mind blowing, but to me, it was quite something when I first heard it. It contains lyrical references to British cultural roots with a melody that deliberately resembles the theme song to TV show Doctor Who. Okay, released July 1st, 2001. Recorded 2001, Blow Yard Studios in London, England, of course. Genre is hip-hop. The writer was Rodney Smith and the producer was Rodney Smith. Now, uh, in hip-hop, we're going to be paying a lot of attention to the producer. Okay, it's often, a, obviously with rock, you have the band, right? They're making the music. Whereas in hip-hop, often you have a producer and a rapper separate. Obviously here, he's the producer and the rapper. He's doing both. 
Okay, so let's read the lyrics. Now, like I said, as a young 10-year-old British boy, when I heard this song, I didn't know what he was talking about. He is obviously talking with a Jamaican accent and uh, kind of a little bit of, uh, it's, I guess it's slang, Jamaican slang mixed with London slang. And also, it's kind of a little bit abstract. So if you don't quite understand everything he's saying, often it's, you know, it's stream of consciousness. It's not like, uh, it's not like a clear, direct storyline. It's kind of stream of consciousness. Okay, let's check it out. Well, 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 well. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit splitter. Breakneck speeds we drown ten pints of bitter. We lean all day, and some say that ain't productive. Could that depend upon the demons that you're stuck with? Because right now, I see clearer than most. I sit here contented with this cheese on toast. I feel the pain of a third world famine. Segway, we count them blessings and keep jamming. Tis him, scumbag, scum of the earth. His worth was nil, until he gained the skill of tongues. From fifteen years young, straight to my greyback self. I stay top shelf material, jerk chicken, jerk fish. And that's not even it. That's like just like the first three quarters of verse one. So this song is heavy in terms of content for my lessons. But let's get into it. Well, 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 we talked about, right? Well, well, well. You can imagine a police officer arriving and catching a criminal who he knows very well. He knows very well and he goes well 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 look who it is should we try a scene switch oh so the police officer arrives he goes well 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 look who it is you again so i guess that would be a ironic <laughs> or sarcastic use of well 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 and it can be used as re a real way of uh, expressing incredulity, right? Disbelief, incredulity. If it's credible, I believe it. If it's incredible, I don't believe it. It's amazing, right? It's incredible. I do not believe it. And incredulity is surprisedness, right? To express surprisedness or incredulity, I do not believe it. Well, well. Wait a second. Are we still... Oh, I gotta switch back. <laughs> I'll get there, guys. I'll get there. I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, so <laughs> incredulity. I was I was highlighting here. Incredulity. Okay, so let's try these two. Well, well, I must say that I didn't expect to receive results like that from the experiment. Okay, so that's someone expressing surprise sincerely, right? They're sincerely surprised. Well, well, I must say I didn't expect that. Well, well, well. It's a little bit posh. So then people use it more sarcastically uh, or ironically. Well, 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 what have we here? You again being stupid, right? You're not surprised. Like you're pretending to be surprised, but you're not surprised. Okay, well, well, well. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit, zit splitter. So we got Taskmaster that he's talking about himself, right? He he. When he was a teenager, we we catch later on that he's a teenager, right? Fifteen years long, young. Fifteen years young. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit splitter. Okay, so what? Bionic. What Taskmaster? Maybe the superhero kind of bionic, right? It's kind of bionic, kind of uh, has greater powers of strength and speed, part human, part man, bionic. And then there's a zit splitter. That's such a nice sound. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit splitter. Try to say that. Taskmaster burst the bionic zit splitter. Whoosh. Beautiful. But let's focus. Let's not get lost in the source. So he's got zits, spots on his face. Normally zits would be more common in America. I would say spots. He's spotty or he's got acne, right? He has got acne or he's got spots. Lots of spots, some acne. So he's uh, he's seeing himself as this bionic superhuman, very strong, but also still he's got these zits and he's kind of young. And then later on, I guess, a breakneck speeds. So carelessly fast and dangerous. They were riding along. They were riding along at a breakneck speed. Right? Breakneck speed. Like, whoosh, like 
break your neck if you crash kind of speed, right? Breakneck speed. And what are they doing at breakneck speeds? They drown. Some people say down here. I think it's drown. I think he says drown. But you could say both. You down a pint of bitter. A pint is the uh, this size of glass, right? You drown a pint, glug, 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 because you're drowning. Or you down a pint, drown, down. Not sure. Uh, bitter, the bit. And then we lean all day. And some say that ain't productive, right? That isn't productive. This is slang here. Ain't, that ain't, that is not. And some would say, and I would say personally, and I would say personally, as a member of the high class society, that that is not productive. Or some say that ain't productive, right? It's slang. It's like more relaxed way to say it. And we lean all day. We lean all day. So... We lean all day, we're doing nothing, we're just leaning on the wall. Maybe he means we lean all day like this, or we lean all day from uh, smoking weed, being high on cannabis after smoking a few joints. Man, I'm really lean. We are lean. But because he says we lean, it's thought of as a verb here, right? We lean all day, but we are lean all day, and some say that it could be both, double, double entendre. But then he says, could that depend upon the demons that you're stuck with? So maybe it's not productive, but it's the only way to deal with the demons, right? The demons, a negative feeling that causes you to worry or behave badly, right? Demons may be, you know, things that happened in your past, in your upbringing that come back to haunt you, you know, like real demons from hell that cause you to behave badly or not be able to cope in modern day society because you have demons you know these negative things that are in the back of your mind that you can't get rid of that maybe being lean all, way, lean all day is the only way for him to get rid of the demons in the back of his mind okay so on to the next four bars because right now I see clearer than most I hit sit here contented with this cheese on toast that's crazy as well like imagine like I don't know, cheese on toast is this kind of iconic British, like, working class meal. You would never catch, you know, someone in the... In England, we don't have the Hollywood elite. We call them the media elite. So people who control, like, music and movie and TV and everything, they'd be the like, media elite. And in the past, you wouldn't catch, like, beans on toast or cheese on toast on TV or in movies or and music because it's like this working class kind of random little bit of society that's not that glamorous but then just hearing it in this song as a child is so cool like with cheese on toast and obviously with all other music being this kind of highly produced glamorous kind of affair this guy's just talking about cheese on toast i loved it uh i feel the pain of a third world famine so third world is developing world like Africa and some parts of Southeast Asia. Right? First world is like developed countries, second world developing, and third world is like really underdeveloped where they have famines, obviously. And segue. Right? The segue to move on to the next one. So he brings up cheese on toast. And then he talks about the pain of a third world famine. Like, he's obviously not hungry, he has his cheese on toast, but he feels this pain, like, it's a strong pain. And that's a segue, right? He connected the two points together. We count them blessings. The cheese on toast is the blessing, right? And keep jamming, keep making music. Tis him, right? It is him. It is tis. Tis him, scumbag, scum of the earth. His worth was nil. So he was worth nothing. He had no worth, right? Scumbag, scum of the earth. We've done famine, scumbag, a very unpleasant person, right? Scumbag. Politicians are all. Oh, wait a second, did I leave it on? Good, good, good. We're learning, we're learning. We're on two, we're on two. Uh, focus. Scum of the earth. Politicians. Imperialists. All of them. But let me not get myself in hot water. Okay, so his worth was nil. His worth was nothing. Nil is zero. So you can have nil nil is zero or nil one, right? This team is the winner or nil five, five nil, <laughs> five nil would be, uh, that's interesting. Nil nil, nil one, but then it's like two nil, three nil. So it's nil one, one nil, eh, one nil. Maybe you can say it both ways. 
Yeah, uh, with the football team, right? Five nil. This team scored five. This team scored nil. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Okay, until he gained the skill of tongues. Now this, according to Genius, is a reference to man's development into a vocal uh, creature, you know, that can express things with words. It was kind of our final point of evolution out of the animal kingdom or he's this teenager right he's uh he's popping these zits he's imagining himself as bionic he's the bionic zit, zit splitter the taskmaster and he's gained the skill of tongues right the skill of rhyming the skill of being able to create these lyrics is what gave him worth you know he was going to be just stuck in poverty for his whole life but instead, he gained the skill of tongues and escaped from 15 years young. Obviously, this is a nice phrasing here because we've got scum, um, scum, young, right? The the vowel sounds. It's not the final rhyme. You got uh, self, uh, shelf, right? There's like there's like rhymes tied all the way through. Okay, so young, 15 years young sounds better than 15 years old because scum and young have the same vowel, whereas old. It's a different vowel sound. So 15 years young is incorrect English. But it sounds quite nice, right? 15 years young. Some old people like to say this. How old are you? Oh, I'm 65 years young because they feel young, right? Straight to my greyback self, right? Now he's a greyback. Uh, we know greyback, silverback, right? Silverback gorilla, greyback self. Uh, there we go. We've reached the end. I stay top shelf material, jerk chicken, jerk fish. Like I say, we're nowhere near the end. This is uh, Hip Hop Lesson 1, Witness One Hope, Part 1. I should have added in the title here. It's Part 1 because there's lots more to this song. But it's quite dense, like I say, with these slang words and this uh, British culture. So, jerk, jerk chicken. There's some jerk chicken, jerk fish, dry rubbed or wet marinated with a hot spice mixture. Damn, that sounds good. And it is dinner time here. So, let's get out of here. Homework. Write a comment below using one or more of the new words so I can check if you have understood. Because, as we know, the only way to improve your English is interacting with native speakers, which I recommend you do by joining me for a lesson on italki. Obviously, listen to the song, Roots Maneuver, Witness the Fitness. Just, uh, like I say, try and get the vibe. Don't try and follow every single word because it's kind of abstract, kind of out there it's, but it's a really cool song really cool song and review from our last lesson pink floyd money you can search best uk hip-hop songs on youtube find one you like and recommend it in a comment let's see what kind of music you guys are into i'm very curious i love music as you guys know already and for next lesson preview the clash we're going to punk straight to hell another one of my all-time favorite songs okay there we go, everybody. Thank you for watching. Peace.